welcome to What Are You Reading, a podcast with the Public Library of Mount Vernon and Knox County. I'm Christy. And I'm Katie. And today we're joined by a special guest. This is Steve. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, we decided to team up with Steve. So um, Steve does a lot of our adult programming, um, main movie nights, silver screeners, uh, armchair traveler, all types of awesome programming uh, geared towards adults. Um, that is film oriented. So Katie and I were talking about it and we thought we haven't had a guest on in a long time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, summer, it's pretty warm outside. Our air conditioning is working. Let's see if we can bring some people inside and have just a really fun night. Mm -hmm. So we decided to team up with Steve and talk about Howl's Moving Castle. So I printed this because all three of us, we read it on uh, Hoopla. Uh, so the audiobook and the ebook is available on Hoopla. Uh, if you, of course, like to check out the physical material, we can always bring that in for you as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so since we're talking about the book, Steve is going to show the movie. Yay! There it is. <laughs> so um, as you know, today, uh, Monday, July 29th, um, where our podcast is going live. Well, tomorrow, Tuesday, July 30th, uh, stop in at the Mount Vernon branch here at the Public Library, and you can watch Howl's Moving Castle with Steve. Yeah. Well, Miyazaki is a wonderful uh, Japanese uh, animator and uh, has a very uh, strong following, not only in the youth, but in older uh, individuals not only in Japan, but all throughout the world, mm -hmm. uh, with great flavors of steampunk as well as classic fantasy tied in with a lot of the traditional Japanese folklore aspects as well. Yeah, we're big fans of Studio Ghibli around here. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a staff member that uh, recently went to Japan, and we were all grilling her when she got back about, mm -hmm. you know, all of the wonderful, like, shops and uh, manga she was able to pick up and, um, you know, what, what was it like being there, you know, and experiencing Japan and the culture and everything. So um, Studio Ghibli Films have always been close to my heart growing up, and mm -hmm. I think a lot of us have... A lot of experience with them. So mm -hmm. getting to read the book was so exciting. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, I'm so sorry. I did not know that it was based off of a book. Oh, <laughs> I missed that. So when we were doing our research, I said, oh my gosh, how did I miss this? But mm -hmm. it's being, I was born in the mid-80s. So that would be why I think I missed the book coming out. Mm -hmm. It was around, what was it? 80, 18, 86. Yeah, 1986. Yeah. So just, just missed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Howl's Moving Castle, the book, is by Diana Wynne-Jones, mm -hmm. and we wanted to give you guys kind of just like an idea of what's going on. No spoilers, of course. You know how this works. Mm -hmm. um, but we meet our main character, Sophie Hatter, and uh, she is 18 years old. She's the eldest of the three daughters of the family, um, and she is kind of feels like she's destined to fail in life because it's known in this kind of fairy tale setting that the oldest of three is known to fail miserably at life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, kind of, uh, she's the practice child, and then the ones that come after then can be successful because the oldest has made all of the mistakes. Yes. And so poor Sophie. So we mm -hmm. already feel sorry for her at the opening of our story. Mm -hmm. um, we meet her, we hear what's going on with her, and she unwittingly attracts the ire of, of course, the, a witch. Mm -hmm. And the Witch of the Waste, who happens to be a very nasty character, mm -hmm. who unfortunately curses our poor Sophie. Mm -hmm. uh, and the curse changes her into an elderly woman. Uh, so, mm -hmm. Sophie, it, it, I, I want to ask you guys, because I thought about this a couple ways, because... As we were talking about Sophie, she's also got a lot of, like, uh, social anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she meets a local boy in town. Um, he offers to walk her home. She tries to walk home with him, and then she's like, ah, you know. Mm -hmm. she, so she, when she gets cursed, she realizes that it's actually kind of nice, it seemed to me, because she was able to have a little bit of, like, anonymity in the town of mm -hmm. Ingary. Um, not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but... Mm -hmm. The land in which this takes place. Mm -hmm. What did you guys think? 
Yeah, I think it gave her some more freedom, Mm -hmm. if nothing else, um, other than, like, this young man who tries to help her walk down the stairs, and she, like, shakes her cane at him. (laughs) Um, So she can just wander around and not have to worry about social conventions or anything, Mm -hmm. and I think it's almost like an invisibility cloak for her. Mm -hmm. Which is really why she feels comfortable when she's introduced to... Hal of Hal's Moving Castle, mm-hmm. uh, because Hal is known, he is a wizard, um, and he is known for being uh, a little bit of a, a a womanizer. We'll just say it. He is. He mm-hmm. likes to date, and he is very cute, so yes. everyone wants to date him. Yes, there, there are some rumors also around that he kidnaps these women, takes them to his castle, and like takes their hearts. Yes. Like, physically takes their hearts. Yes. So, there's lots of anxiety, and you don't want to run into hell anywhere. No. No. So, the whole town is scared. All of our cast of characters that she meets, that Sophie meets along the way after she ventures out of her her town, um, everyone is kind of warning her, like, oh, no, you know, this this guy, he's, he's terrible. But she feels pretty safe because she's looking like an older woman who is definitely not his taste. Mm -hmm. Um, So she feels pretty confident that she can um, get along with this person and maybe this person would give her a job, something like that. Mm -hmm. And along the way, maybe fix her predicament. Yes. But it turns out that Hal also is in a predicament. Indeed. Well, I was going to say um, a little... uh, different uh, point of view on mm-hmm. her reaction to her curse. To me, I think she found it freeing because a lot of her angst is, what am I going to become? Where mm-hmm. do I go from here? Mm-hmm. Suddenly, she's looking back in the mirror at an 80-year-old, yet that's the last stage of the life. Mm-hmm. Now she can just be or do whatever she wants because mm-hmm. she doesn't have that weight of what's going to be next there's not any suddenly there's no next left to be worried about Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think that frees up her to be herself more Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think so too it definitely gives her the courage to um i think even engage with who we meet inside of Hal's moving castle Mm -hmm. uh calcifer who is a fire demon Mm -hmm. um and he lives in Hal's castle and she's able to communicate with him. They're able to talk about their situation, the curse that both of them are under, mm-hmm. and how they might be able to use each other in order to break the curses that have been placed upon them. Mm-hmm. So Sophie's doing a lot of things that we see her when she's working at the hat shop and she's you know, with her family and feeling lesser than her younger sisters, Martha and Letty. Um, we actually get to see her really take control and be in charge and mm-hmm. engage with a fire demon and a wizard, mm-hmm. um, a scarecrow, you know, all of these people that she meets along the way. And she really is the catalyst for um, freeing a lot of other people from mm-hmm. confines that they have as well. Mm-hmm. So it is a pretty magical experience. And I will say that I had seen the movie. And I love the movie Christian Bale stars as a uh, how. Um, so I have loved it. But there were things that I necessarily didn't grasp. You know, I wasn't sure the reasoning of like, why is this this certain event happening? Or yeah. what did this mean? Mm-hmm. The reading the book really helped fill in the, the blanks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, it's almost like the howl in the movie is still the howl of the book, but it's like howl of the book is like turned up to 11. Mm -hmm. So however ridiculous and vain he appears in the movie, Mm -hmm. like 10 times that in the book, which was really a lot of fun. It was. And you somehow were still able to fall in love with this character who is just vain as I'll get out, but you find out parts of why. Mm-hmm. And what he himself is running from. So this all-powerful wizard who is absolutely gorgeous and just stealing hearts of girls all over the land um, actually has a lot of secrets himself and a lot of weaknesses himself mm-hmm. that Sophie is able to help him overcome. 
And um, together we do get a happy ending. Of course, no spoilers, but we'll say that. Mm -hmm. Um, And there are two other books in the series. Mm -hmm. Um, So there is more to enjoy from this. And I compared it this morning. I was talking to our assistant director, Cassandra, about how I kind of got Wizard of Oz, um, Mm -hmm. you know, a little bit of... um, uh, a, a Wrinkle in Time, you know, I kind of got those kind of, those vibes of like middle grade. We talked about mm-hmm. uh, fantasy. Um, there's a little bit of enemies to lovers with the romance that develops between Sophie and Hal throughout the book as well. Mm-hmm. So um, I thought this was just a really great fantasy mm-hmm. that was really easy to read, really fun. Mm-hmm. And now I want to go back and watch the movie. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Which everybody get a chance to on Tuesday, yes. July 30th with Steve. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And if you haven't seen the movie, you definitely should, um, whether or not you've read the book. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think you can do either first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I would encourage doing both at some point. Yes. But, um, but yeah. Absolutely. We compared it, too, to, like, the fifth Harry Potter. So... Um, you know, if you're familiar with that at all, uh, Order of the Phoenix, because if you saw the movie, th- that book is, you guys, I mean, it's a paperweight, right? Mm-hmm. There's so much in there. How are you going to get that into a feature film? Um, so reading the book was really a compliment to the film, and that is exactly how I feel with this. Reading the book is definitely, you know, something that you need to do along with the film, mm-hmm. especially if you have any questions. Mm-hmm. I was like, hey, how do we get here? Also, uh, there is a variation of flavor between the two also. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, like I said, Miyazaki uh, traditionally adds that almost British steampunkish uh, uh, flavor, which is unique out of uh, a uh, Asian animator. Uh, mm-hmm. His fondness for that shines through. Um, whereas uh, you can tell that the uh, author of the book is very much an American mm-hmm. writer. And, mm-hmm. and the structure and the tropes uh, follow through similarly, and and the the differences don't clash with each other, but mm-hmm. they make them enough distinctive that uh, as two separate entities. Absolutely, mm-hmm. and um, I did read that um, Diana Wynne Jones um, and Miyazaki had a really a great relationship and a mutual admiration for each other. Mm-hmm. So she really appreciated the film. He obviously was very inspired by the book mm-hmm. um, to create Howl's Moving Castle, the film. So mm-hmm. um, it's just great to see creators uh, mm-hmm. connect that way and respect each other. And mm-hmm. you can read the book and watch the film and know that there's just a lot of love and respect there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they complement each other very well. They really do. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you to Steve. Definitely stop in and check out all of his wonderful programming. Um, Stop by our website, stop in in person, um, and get those on your schedule. So you won't want to miss out on anything he has coming up either. Generally, that's every Tuesday evening starting at 7 o'clock down here in the uh, meeting room. Yep, at the Mount Vernon branch. So stop on in and go on an adventure with Steve. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you all so much. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.